I'm Michael Meyer, and I'm the author of the Bedford Introduction to Literature. After 10 editions and 30 years of working with this anthology, I'm still convinced that it's essential to make sure students enjoy literature in an introductory course. I want them to think of literature as something more than just required reading. The goal is for them to see it as a valuable way of understanding life in all its fullness, subtlety, and ambiguity. I like to think of the Bedford Introduction to Literature as a small library that offers a wide range of works that are inherently interesting, engaging, and teachable. There are pieces that are simple and complex, as well as classic and popular. I try to emphasize all the messy, curious, and surprising pleasure that there is in reading, and I think contemporary selections can enrich students' reading of canonical works. This is not a bait-and-switch strategy. Instead, it's a double hook an incentive for students to make thematic and stylistic connections that reinforce the kind of analytic skills they need to be informed, intelligent, critical readers and writers. I've taught many courses during my university career, but the introductory one is especially important because it might be the only literature course students ever take. With that in mind, I've chosen short stories, poems, and plays that are accessible as well as rich and complex and arranged them by genre. Alongside canonical writers like Sophocles and Shakespeare, Dickinson and Hawthorne, are contemporary selections from Annie Prue, Nathan Englander, Sherman Alexie, and David Ives. I collaborated with Billy Collins, Julia Alvarez, and Dagoberto Gilb on chapters dedicated to their work. Each author wrote commentaries on the works that they selected for the anthology. They provided manuscript pages and personal photographs to bring these chapters to life. I hope they inspire students regardless of their backgrounds, abilities, and interests, become lifelong readers who write thoughtfully and skillfully. I believe that emphasizing literature on relatable themes encourages students not to mistakenly associate it more with school than with life. For this 10th edition, I added three new case studies with that in mind. Chapters on the Harlem Renaissance, poetry in response to full-color fine art, and a provocative selection of poems about the world of work, all of them help students make literary connections to issues of race, politics, the visual arts, and the business of making a living. That last case study of poems about work dovetails nicely with another chapter new to this edition. In chapter 15, Dagoberto Gilb's powerful short stories about working-class Mexican-American life are written by an award-winning author who spent a significant portion of his life as a high-rise carpenter before he became a full-time writer. His stories, like his frank commentaries about them, are solid and sound. I've also worked to provide clear, helpful commentary written in a tutorial tone rather than in a pedantic or jargon-written one. Prose that clarifies students' reading rather than unnecessarily complicating it. There are also seven chapters that cover every step of the writing process and 25 sample student papers integrated throughout the book. And the anthology offers a new feature by a number of writers, including Martina Spada, Susan Minot, and Tony Hoagland, who use their own experiences to offer succinct advice to students on things like managing writer's block and how to get started as a writer. Their lively and varied insights make the writing life, whether it's creative writing, critical, business, or otherwise, more accessible to all students. My major goal is to entice students rather than to intimidate them. For that reason, I include some popular literature to introduce some basic literary concepts. For fiction, there's an excerpt from a romance novel. For poetry, there's greeting card verse. And for drama, there are excerpted scripts from Seinfeld. These are not dumbed down, let's take the low road ploys, but instead intriguing comparisons of the similarities and inevitable differences between popular and serious imaginative literature. I hope this anthology makes literature essential to students for the pleasures and dazzling insights they discover. I hope their readings contribute to a lifelong passion, leading them to steal time from their other courses or their jobs to read. I hope it helps them to understand that reading literature is finally not just about an exam or a college degree, but about the life all around them in the best ways imaginable.